Hello and welcome back to Think Build Test. Today we're going to start cutting up this frame and getting things to size and we'll probably even start tacking some things up with some welds. Previously on X-Frame. Is that a bolt? Are you happy to see me? Does this go here? This is not fitting as tight as I would like it to. Don't do that! Before we can start cutting our metal, we need to figure out what we got from the metal yard. One of the things when I considered the length that I wanted this to be was how I can buy things. There's two ways to buy metal. You can buy a single 20 foot stick all in one piece, or you can have that 20 foot piece cut in half for a cut charge of usually $2 a cut, or you can buy a 10 foot half piece for a higher price. So what I did to save money and be able to get my truck in there without having to take a trailer was I bought 20 foot sticks and had them cut them at 10 feet. That is one reason why I chose to make this deck 10 feet long. Now, the metal yard will not cut precise lengths. They have a 10 foot mark on their cutting machine and they just cut it. So you don't know if you're getting exactly 10 feet. So before we start cutting, let's see what the metal yard gave us. Okay, so the way that it looks is angle iron comes in one inch over 20 feet and our square tubing comes in exactly at 20 feet. So on our X frame, we're gonna need to do everything that we do to one side, we do exactly to the other side. That way our lift will come out perfectly level at the top. Now our X frame beams are gonna need to be a little bit shorter than our rails. That way they can ride on the inside of the track. Let's start this project off right by squaring up all of our pieces to the same size and we'll take our smallest measurement. So that looks like our angle iron is gonna be 10 feet long with a half inch over and our square tubing is gonna be 10 foot long minus a half an inch. I really don't like to upsell people on things that they don't need that are just gonna cost them more money but Building these forklifts and having this tractor is one of the best investments I've made in my life. I use these forklifts every other day. There's things that you didn't even know that you could save your back on and you can just get so much more work around the house done. The things that you dread doing because you have to move something heavy, you just go fork it and get on with your day. Uh, so yeah, just fork it, they're excellent. So this forklift is gonna allow me to get myself off the ground for this project. Usually I'm down on my knees with the angle grinder. I know, I know I probably need a bandsaw or a chop saw, but uh, those are just a couple of things that uh, I have to prioritize in my budget to get. Angle grinders are cheap and you can use them at any space. That's usually why I just stay with using the angle grinder. Okay, the next measurement we're gonna need is our top cap. We need to know the width of it. We're gonna take the dimension of our outside frame, which is 39 and three quarters. Now we're gonna subtract two inches from that for 37 and three quarter inches. That way we'll have an inch on each side of hand pinch gap for protection. So now we can cut this angle iron to 37 and three quarter. The next thing we need to do is to get ready to weld the top cap together. So we're going to need to make a cut that will make this fit flush, but we want to have our long rails fully intact for the full length. So we want to make our cuts in our end caps. So there's two ways you could do this. You could bevel each at 45 degrees and weld them together or you could just do a square notch in only one piece. So that's what I'm gonna do, is just the square notch in the end cap. Oops.
Okay, now that we have the top frame dimension set in place, we'll just kind of build this thing upside down from here. This side of the outside piece is going to be the roller, so it'll be on the frame rolling. The other end will be kicked up. One thing that we've noticed is these bolts have super large heads, so we're going to have to compensate that, and I'll probably be shearing these bolt heads down, but they're going to have to go in between this and this, so I need some clearance here for these head bolts and I'm probably gonna have to find some little thing to keep it gliding off of this edge without rubbing into the metal. Maybe some kind of a plastic slide bushing or something just mounted on this inside here to give it some standoff. We're gonna plan at least a half inch between the inside of this and this front side of this. The inside piece on that end will be the fixed end, and then this side will be what rolls on the floor. On this side, we're gonna have to have the clearance of our rollers, plus enough for maybe a washer in between to help with any friction reduction on these as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure and dimple all the halfway points on our X beams. I'm gonna put a punch mark at two inches. Okay, so I have a secret weapon I've been waiting to show you guys for this build. It'll be my first time to try this weapon out on a big project. Voila! Okay, so that's right. I have a magnetic drill press. Today is the day I'm making a change. Building